I know a lot of you have been busy living your lives and whatnot, and you probably haven't had a lot of time to pay attention to what's been going on in Columbia, South Carolina. But this happens to be my life, so I've got all the time in the world to pay attention to things like Shane Beamer and things like the offensive coordinator search there in Columbia. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, I'm a Washington fan. Like, I'm a USC fan. What do I care about South Carolina's offensive coordinator search? Well, the answer in and of itself may be you don't care a whole lot. But the trimmings, you may not care about the tree, but the trimmings around said tree, the ornaments on that tree, it's gotten pretty interesting up there. It's gotten pretty spicy. Uh, Shane Beamer, for the record, hired Dowell Logans as the offensive coordinator. Comes to Columbia by way of Arkansas. He was the tight end coach there. So again, as, as much as I credit him and we, we, we golf clap him, that's wonderful. That's really not been the big takeaway from, from this little ordeal. So here's what I want to do. I, I'm going to have Colin tee up some sound for you. This is earlier this week. And I told you 24 hours ago I was going to talk about this tonight. As it turns out, we're leading the show with it. Shane Beamer meets with the media there in Columbia. And boy, did he have some things to say. Let's roll it. People that are in the profession know about Dow Loggins. So I read your article this morning, Gene, and that's great. I'm sure in your research you did more than just say, well, I haven't heard of that guy before. Let me see what his stats said. Oh, well, he had a run as a coordinator in the NFL that maybe wasn't as successful that he wanted, so he must not be very good. Surely you did more research than that, Gene. And it's not just Gene, it's a lot of people. So surely everybody that wants to critique every hire that we make here, I'm sure you guys knew that Dow Loggins turned down a coordinator job in the SEC last year, correct? Everybody knew that, right? I'm sure you guys know that I'm the fourth SEC head coach that's reached out to him in the last two weeks about coming to work for him. So we were fortunate to hire Dow Loggins. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, just, just a little random straw poll that I'm not going to have time to see the results from. What do you think I thought about that? Knowing me like you do, what do you think I thought about that? I have several thoughts. Uh, it's going to make me sound... I guess a little conflicted. So here's the first thing you need to know. I'm a Shane Beamer guy. I like him. And in this case, I empathize with him because if you've watched this program for any length of time, you know that that might as well have been me. I, I speak like that. I phrase things like that. So I'm certainly not mad at the style there of Shane Beamer. But Shane Beamer finds himself in what we would call a classic conundrum. And that classic conundrum is the kind where you can be both right and wrong all at the same time. How does that happen? Your teachers probably taught you it's impossible. Well, in the real world, it is impossible. But friends, this is college football. This is not the real world. And it is possible for Shane Beamer to absolutely have more access to information than you and I do about a hire. And he could have infinitely more football knowledge. In fact, I would argue he's probably forgotten more about football than most of the people in that room. No disrespect to the room. It's just respect to the position of a head coach. He could be in that position. He could know a lot more about Dowell Logans than anyone else does. He could have absolutely thoroughly vetted the guy and all those things could be true. And yet the approach could still be, I'm not going to say wrong, but at the very least unwise. And here is why. Second quote from Mima already tonight. Mima used to tell me all the time, make what other people think about you none of your business, Joshua. She was a full name kind of gal. And so she's right. I didn't know it at the time, but boy, she was right. Because here's how this is going to go down, okay? Dowell Logans may flame out after a year. He may be a wild success story there in Columbia. The standard is different for Shane Beamer. The standard is different for head coaches. Why do all those folks and all the fans in the stands and online and on message boards, why do they get to have opinions and run their mouth? It's because they make 48 grand a year. It's because they don't make seven figures a year. It's because they're not entrusted to run a program. Is it fair? Actually, they would argue it's more than fair, and it wouldn't really matter what you say in return. But here's the thing about that. You don't get to be wrong. They get to be wrong all the time. Now, you know that on this show, I rarely ever question play calling. I rarely ever question hires. It's because I am acutely aware 
that what Shane Beamer just said is true, even about me. I don't have access to the information he has access to. I don't have the football mind that he does, and most of these other head coaches, I say most, because even I think that there are a couple out there I could go toe-to-toe with. But real talk, I know that. So I personally don't choose to traffic in the criticism game, but that's okay. A lot of other people do. That's your prerogative. If I were to traffic in it, and I blasted this hire, and it turns out that he nailed it, guess what happens? I don't have to atone for my incorrect statement. I don't have to atone for any failed prediction, nor do they. They can go 0 for 10. Guess what's going to happen tomorrow morning? They're going to show right back up and park in the same parking spot and walk to the same desk and type out in the same computer what they just whiffed on 10 other times because that's the game. However, you don't get to whiff. Shane Beamer doesn't get to whiff. He hires the right guy this time. That's all well and good. He's eventually going to have to make more hires. And the same ones that blasted him for this one, even if they turn out to be wrong, are saving that sound. And somewhere down the road, because you're not a made man in this sport yet, there's really only one or two, to be honest, somewhere down the road, they're either going to pull out that ax that they have to grind against you, or they're just going to flat out pull out the sound and say, man, remember when this guy thought he was going to school us? Remember when this guy thought he was going to teach us a thing or two? My how the turntables, as Michael Scott would say, it's going to happen. It's, it's just a matter of when. It's not a matter of if. And so I listened to that. And at very first, I said, good for Shane Beamer. Now go get him. If they want to turn that sword on you, turn it right back around on them. Just a jab in the ribs, just a flesh wound. We're not looking to inflict serious damage here. But I know where this is going. I hope he does. Uh, but I know where this is going. And look, uh, Shane Beamer's not the only one that gets his hires criticized. Let's be real about this. The guy's overachieved two years in a row. So that, that same group of folks predicted him to win a certain amount of games. He's won more than that amount two years in a row. He should be up on him two zip. He's not, because that's not how this game works. It's like a reset button. It's hit every day. Shane Beamer's doing okay at South Carolina right now, but he's not a made man. Nick Saban is. Dabo probably is. Outside of that, Harbaugh is. I don't think we have more made men in this sport right now. Made, meaning you truly can just say whatever you want to. I mean, within the realm of realism, you can say whatever you want to, and you are just immune you at that point are Teflon. Well, there are very, very few of those in our sport. And uh, Shane Beamer's not one of them, but that's okay. I I would argue that hardly any of his peers are either. It's gonna come back to bite you. You gotta learn to swallow that criticism. You you may have thin skin. Hey, I got got news for you. Um, The eye Josh here, if it could talk, it would tell you a lot of coaches have thin skin. Jesse knows, Colin knows, because I tell him. Yes, sometimes. When we speak about coaches on this show, there are a lot of coaches out there who claim they never watch these shows and never listen to these shows and never read that work out there that get in touch with you just like that when you mention their name. I don't mind that because normally I can back up what I say and it, it hardly ever gets truly contentious. But they have thin skin too. They just don't always address it publicly. Um, the, the right way to do it is to go to Gene for example, one-on-one. I'm not sure he didn't do that, but I would just, I would just head Gene off at the pass there. Gene, here's what I have to say to you. I'm not going to say it in front of all of them in the world. Here's what I have to say to you. Now, I am wise enough to know if Shane Beamer is worth his salt as a head coach, he shouldn't be taking advice from me, but I'm going to offer it anyway. Please, please, Shane. We'll eventually have you on the show so we can talk about this face-to-face, but please, Make what they think about you none of your business. Life is so much easier that way, and that's doubly true when it comes to running a major college football program. Let that be a lesson to all of you. Guys, thanks for watching Late Kick. Make sure to leave a comment. I love interacting with you. But most of all, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. That's how we keep all of this free.